فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم because the language it can be is a barrier for the religion if the person doesn't learn the arabic language wallahi you can fool yourself my brothers wallahi you can tell yourself whatever you want if you don't learn this language you're never going to reach and you're never going to get to the chance of becoming a real student of knowledge let alone a scholar because the quran that we are reading is in this language the prophet that we are uh, of his ummah spoke this language the scholars who explained all of this they did it in the arabic language makes sense so the language being arabic now generally speaking two languages cannot fully translate one another how do you think then a rich language like the arabic language for a language that's lower than it weaker than it is going to be able to fulfill huh the right of translating it it's not going to happen there's always naqs deficiency in the translation because this language allah chose it from all the languages there's a reason why allah chose the arabic language you see so now ibn hajar rahimahullah he had the ability to choose of which science he wants to specialize in and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala placed in his heart فَحَبَّبَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ عِلْمَ الْحَدِيثِ Allah placed in his heart the love of ilm al-hadith and what did he do in the science of hadith? الَّذِي أَقْبَلَ عَلَيْهِ بِكُلِّيَّتِهِ Ibn Hajar the love and the passion that he loved had for ilm al-hadith led to what? what did it lead to? it led to him giving his all to seeking it and I want you to remember this powerful statement I really want you guys to remember this quote anyone who gives knowledge his all knowledge will give you something in return and anyone who gives knowledge some it doesn't give you anything back in return in order to get something from knowledge you have to give it all of yourself your time your money your energy your efforts your uh, everything then it would the knowledge would then have mercy to you and it would just give you something in return you see and that's what happened ibn hajar alayhi rahmatullahi what did he do aqbala alayhi bi he faced knowledge with all of his heart and so what did he do then وأخذ يتتلمذ ويقرأ على كبار المحدثين فيه he went and what did he do he started to become the student and to read on the great scholars of his time of hadith from them from those people and these are we're talking about these are the kibaru musnidi asrihi bi misra wa ghayriha fi mudatin qasira in a very short time not long very short time very short time he went around egypt and other places and he met now this is after he found the love in his heart my brothers and sisters you have to realize once you find in your heart that you have love and a passion for something a good dream is half the bottle you've already, you've already got half of the bottle sorted you just now need to go out of your way and to accomplish it and to go out and find it if you just stay at that point where you just dream and you just think about it and you dwell over it you're not going to get nowhere and Hajar didn't do that he realized that this is what he loves he saw the passion and the love for ilm al-hadith so what did he do? you with me? He gave it all to it. In a very short period of time, he went out to the noble elite scholars of his time. And from those scholars, وَعَلَىٰ رَأْسِهِمْ The head of them is Al-Hafidh Zainuddin Abu Al-Fadl Abd Al-Rahim Ibn Al-Hussein Al-Iraqi The author of Al-Fiyah Al-Fiyah Al-Iraqi 
Zainuddin al Iraqi, who died the year 806. How long did he stay with him? Two days? Three days? Four days? Five days? How long do you think he stayed with him? A month or two and come back? La. الذي لازمه عشر سنوات. He was with him for ten years. He was in the company of Zainuddin al Iraqi for ten years. إلى أن توفي رحمه الله. And he stayed with him until Zainuddin al Iraqi died. Are you with me? فانتفع بملازمته كثيرا. And he truly benefited. From the companionship and being very close with Zainuddin al Iraqi. He really benefits from a lot from the scholars that he took from. From the scholars he took from is Sarajuddin al Bulqaini. That's the correct way of saying his name. Sarajuddin al Bulqaini, and it is not Bulqini as many people say. Sarajuddin al Bulqaini. Which is the Fath al Qaf, place place in a Sarajuddin al Bulqaini, who is the teacher of and is from the people. Mimman Akhada an hum aidan. It's from the people in which he took from. And rather, Ibn Hajar, when he says Qal al Shaykh al Islam, he refers, he means Sarajuddin al Bulqaini. That's who he means. When Ibn Hajar in Fath al Bari says Qal al Shaykh al Islam, he is referring to and he means who? His teacher, Sarajuddin al Bulqaini. From the scholars that he took from is who? <coughs> Ibn Mulaqin. Ibn Mulaqin, which we, when we were studying Umdatul Hakam, we were bringing his statements because he has a book called Al Ilam before Waid Umdatul Hakam. Sah? Ibn Mulaqin. Sa'ad, Sahih? Naam. Al Ilam before Waid Umdatul Hakam. We were bringing his statements and things that he said. So this is from the shuyukh of Ibn Hajar. Rather, Ibn Mulaqin has a sharh in Sahih Bukhari. A tawdih wal idah. He sharh in Sahih Bukhari. He explains Sahih Bukhari. Ibn Mulaqin. From his teachers is Burhanuddin al-Anbasi. From his teachers is Burhanuddin al-Anbasi. In which he took knowledge from and he learned from. He also took from Nuruddin al Haythami. Nuruddin al Haythami. Ibn Hajar, he did not stop. He carried on. Yaqra'u ala shuyukh, he reading on the scholars. Wa ya'khudu anhum, and taking from them masmu'atihim. Taking from them the narrations. And that, ha, ijazat. Different cities and towns. He went to Haramain, Mecca and Medina. He went to Iskandariya. He went to Beit al Maqdis. He went to Khalil. He went to Nabulis. He went to Bilad al Yemen. Other than that, he traveled Ibn Hajar. To the extent that his scholars they passed, Hatta Kathura Shuyuku, his scholars they became far and great in number. كثرة لا توصف A number that cannot be described. And no one is able to restrict and narrow down who he heard from. No one can give you a particular amount of number due to its successive number. Until Ibn Hajar became what my brothers. He became Farid Zamanihi. He became the only man who stood out from the rest of all the people. وَحَامِلُ رِوَاءِ السُنَّةِ فِي أَوَانِهِ and he became the one that was carrying the banner of the Sunnah of his time. And he became the Dhahabi of his time. The Imam al Dhahabi of his time. He became Umdatul Muhaqqiqeen. He became the backbone of the scholars of Tahqiq. And he became Wakhatimatul Huffad al Mubarrizeen of Rahmatullahi Rahmat al Wasi'ah. And he was one of the last Huffad of this Ummah. Some scholars they say there was no one after him was a hafiz. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon Ibn Hajar. So now we've spoken about the third point. We spoke about what? We spoke about his the first point, which was his name, his lineage, his nickname, and his kunya. We also spoke about 
his birth and his and where he was born we also, we also spoke we also, we also spoke about his upbringing and his seeking of knowledge we're now going to speak about his status of knowledge and the way that the scholars praised him the scholars all of them it became a tifaq, unanimous agreement, consents from the teachers of Ibn Hajar and his contemporaries, his peers, and even those who came after him from the great noble scholars, min al kibar, they all agreed ala thana'i ala al to praise him. Not only that, wa wasfuhu bil hifz tam wal ilm wafir. They all agreed to. Describe him to be a person whose memory is a hundred percent and that his knowledge the same that his knowledge is the same now I want you guys to take this on board and to understand this and the caliber of this and how the severity of it how serious it is when you get praised by your students or you get praised by your colleagues and your peers and when you get praised by your teacher, are they all the same? No. No. When your students praise you, is their ignorance of the knowledge that's out there may make them think that you're there. So that doesn't have much weight. When your peers praise you, it has a, it's a bit, it's now up now. Because they're leveled with you. They've acknowledged that you're just in front of them. I said, good. But what's even greater is the teachers and the people who taught you if they stick a finger at you and say, wow. If they hit a hand on another hand and say, ajeeb. This person is an amazing person. This is shrik. Ibn Hajar got three groups of people who said this about him. All parties have agreed on him. His students, his peers, and his teachers. So because the praise that are out there regarding him, my brothers, I can't, I can't, because I'll give you how large it is in quantity. If you go to the book that I mentioned before, which is Al-Jawahir wa durar fi tarjamati shaykh of Hafiz ibn Hajar, if you look at it, there's a whole chapter. He made a whole chapter, Saqawi, to bring all the scholars that praised him. All of the scholars, he made a whole chapter. Guess how many pages it is? It starts from page 263 to page 230, 300, sorry, from 263 to page 335. All of that is what? What the scholar said about him. So I can't go through all those pages of what each scholar said about him. So how would I? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to bring one of his teachers. I'm also going to bring one of his peers. And I'm also going to be one of his students, and I'll leave it there. And that's, that's the three levels of people. And all of those three levels of people that I bring are going to be all Hufad themselves. They're Hufad. And this is what has... is the reality. Even Sakhawi, after bringing from page 263 to page 335, all of that praise, he says the following about Ibn Hajar. He says, As for the praises of the scholars on him, To restrict an amount to the scholars who praised him is impossible. It's undoable. And Sakhawi then says, Rather, in summary, it is a consist. It is a consensus amongst the ulama. I mean, they all agree. This is not something. There's any proof and evidence needs to be brought. See, jama. But then he went on to say, "Lakin uthbitu ma hadarani min dalik al-ana ala hasb al-imkan," and I'm only going to bring and mention from what page? Page two hundred sixty-three to page three hundred thirty-five. I'm only going to bring that which comes to my mind. 
Ajeeb. So, as I said, I'm only going to bring those three levels. His own sheikh, his peer, and also his student. Who is his sheikh that praised him? His name is Zainuddin al-Iraqi. Zainuddin al-Iraqi. Zainuddin al-Iraqi is sahibu al -fiyya. He's the author of al -fiyya, the thousand lines of hadith. He wrote it. That students memorize. You see, Imam al-Iraqi, this is what he said about his own students. Now when this comes from a teacher, who he himself, Iraqi rahimahullah, is an hafiz, alim, scholar, when he says this about his student, then you know the value and the status or the this statement, what it really holds. This is what he said about him. He didn't say, oh, he's good. He's been with us for a little bit and we know him and he knows us. And Alhamdulillah, he's upon khair. That's not the type of praise that he put towards him. Look what he said about him. He said, Al-Shaykh Al-Alim. He said, he's a sheikh and he's a scholar. wal kamil Al-Fadil. The complete and the virtuous. Al-Imam Al-Muhaddith. He's an Imam and he's a Muhaddith. Al-Mufid Al-Mujid. Beneficial one. Al Hafid al Mutqin. Again, he brought it. He said, A Hafid. Hafid means what? A person who's reached a high caliber of hadith. He memorized the, 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 the number of hadith he knows, and the ones he doesn't know, the one he knows is more. Hafid. Mutqin means what? Mutqin means when a person solidifies something, like it's become solid in his brain. Al Dabid al Thiqqat al Ma'moon. Reliable person. His integrity is up there. So this statement of Al Imam al Iraq and it goes on to say in Jama al Ruwata wa Shuyukha, wa maya zabain al Nasikh wa al Mansukh, wa Jama al Muafakati wa al Abdan, wa maya zabain al Thikati wa al Duafa imin al Rijan, wa Afra da bijidihi al Hafif, Hatan Kharata fi sal silki ahli al Hadith, wa Hasala fi zabal il Yasir, ala il bin Razir. He knows the abrogated narrations from that which is not abrogated. He has combined between, uh, you know, and he knows the difference between the reliable narrators and from the weak narrators. You see, he, in a very short time in his life, he has reached a position where he treaded on the path of the scholars of hadith. This is tiskiya min alimin litilmidi. This is a praise from a scholar, an alim, haqqan, to a student of his. That's very powerful. And then you have his peer, Taqiyuddin Muhammad ibn Muhammad, who's known, very well known as Al-Ma'ruf ibn Fahd al-Hashimi al-Makki. And uh, ibn Fahd al-Hashimi al-Makki, he placed a veil on the Tathkirat al-Hufad by Imam al-Dhahabi. Imam al-Dhahabi has a Tathkirat al-Hufad. He added additional narrators on there in which Al-Imam ibn Hajar did not say. And he said about Ibn Hajar, because remember Ibn Hajar is after who? And remember Dhabi, right? So then this kitab requires the people, the Hufad that came after, they need to be added to the Tathkir of Hufad, right? The Hufad. Sah? So he did it. And he added his peer to it. And he said, Al Imam al Alam, Al Hafid, Farid al Wakti, Mufkir al Zaman, Baqiyat al Hufad, Alam al Aimmat al Alam, Umdat al Muhakikin, Khatimat al Hufad al Mubrizil, Wal Qubat al Mashurin. He said about he's an Imam, he's an Alam, he's a Hafiz. He's unique at his time. He was unique. He was the honor of his time. He's the remaining of the Hufad. He's the backbone of the Muhakkikin. And, and he was a Qadi. He was a very well known Qadi. He was a judge. Also, he got the same praise from his student, which is the third, which is Burhanuddin al Buqai. So his student Burhanuddin al Buqai rahimahullah al Buqai rahimahullah. He said, Sheikh al Islam, wa Taraz al Anam, Alam al Aimma al Alam, Hafiz al Asr wa Ustad al Dhar, Sultan al Ulama wa Malik al wa Malik al wa wa Malik al Fuqaha, al Ladi ida salak bahr al Tafsir kana tarjuman. He said, He's a Sheikh al Islam. He said, He's Taraz al Anam, 
عالم الأئمة العالم إذا العالم هي إذا إذا star of the scholars he is the hafiz of his time he is the he is the lead he is the king of the fuqaha إذا سلك مسلك إذا سلك بحر التفسير if he treads on the path of tafsir he was a turjuman he was an interpreter أو ركب متن الحديث and if he went on the boat of speaking about علم the the hadith and its matter and its wordings he was the Imam Ahmed of his time كان أحمد الزمان and he called he said about him وأظهر من خفايا خفايا ما لم يسبق إليه أبو حاتم ولا ابن حبان and he brought out hidden matters very deep detailed matters that even Abu Hatim and Ibn Hibban did not precede him in it. If he speaks, وَإِنْ تَكَلَّمَ فِي الْفِقْءِ If he speaks about fiqh, and وَأُصُولُ الْفِقْءِ عُلِمَ أَنَّهُ شَافِعِي You know, you think this is Imam Shafi'i speaking. أَوْ تَيَمَّمَ كَلَامَ الْعَرَبِ And if he brings forward the Arabic, the Arabs and their saying and their poetry and their, the, you know, the definition of words, then you would, and the differences of it, then you think this is Sibawai and Mubarrit. وَإِنْ عَرَضَ الْعُرُوضَ أَوِ الْأَدَبِ If he goes to عِلْمُ الْعُرُوضَ الْقَوَافِي which is the studies of poetry or Arabic literature then you think to yourself this is Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. You think this person you're talking about is Al-Khalil ibn Ahmed al-Farahidi. And whenever the scholars of different fields, he speaks about their field, you think to yourself, he's the one who's leading them in this. Are you with me? This is not uh, praises which are little that he got. Really what summarizes it is the line of poetry that was said about him. The poet he said, it is impossible for time to bring the likes of him again. For verily, the time is stingy to give us the likes of him again. And also, another poet, he said, nisa, The women are unable to give birth. The word aqim, in, what does it mean in English? The woman who can't give children birth. She's called barret. Barren. 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 The women have become barren. Fima yaridna shabihahu. To give the likes of Ibn Hajar. In النِّسَاءَ بِمِثْلِهِ عَقِيمُ The women, to give, the, to give birth to the likes of Ibn Hajar, they can't do that. They're in that department, they're عَقِيم. Does that make sense? This really is these two lines of poetry that were said about him from two different individuals. They all indicate the reality of who he was. This is the reality of Ibn Hajar, رحمه الله تعالى. And now I mentioned my brothers, I don't want you to think to yourselves, that that is just what was said about him. For that is only what? هذا شيء قليل. That's very little, I said. مما قيل فيه من الثلاء. That which has been said about him. And that which I have not mentioned. وما لم أذكره. That which I haven't mentioned. كثير جدا. is excessive. And the reason why we didn't mention it is what? تركته خشية الإطالة. We were only running away to go long and... نعم. But I think the whole the, the message has reached home. And of course, if you want to see more into it, then of course you can go to the Kitab Al Jawahir Wal Durar, Fi Tarjamati Shaykh Al Islam Ibn Hajar by Sakhawi. We're now going to move on to the last point of Ibn Hajar, his biography. The last point, which is Musannafatuhu, his books, the books that he wrote. We all spoke about, and I did mention in the beginning, and just now we were speaking about Nashat al Hafiz ibn Hajar, Imam ibn Hajar's efforts, his knowledge based, Nashat al Ilmiyyah, his knowledge based efforts. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Especially the year we were speaking about is the year uh, 796, was the year in which Allah ta'ala placed in his heart the love of hadith, right? حيث حبب الله تبارك وتعالى له علم الحديث أنا أنا إذا said before فاتجه إليه بكليته اتجاها قويا he went towards that direction of hadith with his whole heart ودخل في السلم كافة 
enter into Islam wholeheartedly, right? He entered into the science of hadith wholeheartedly. Not one foot in and one foot out. He gave everything. And he faced it with his whole face and his whole body. And my brothers, you know what's amazing? And his age at that time was what? Only 23 years of age. 23 years of age. Um, from that time, from that time, Ila Qubayli Wafati, just before he's dying, he served Wahab al He basically took his life and he gifted it to the Sunnah and the working of the Sunnah. That's what he did. He actually gifted his nafs to working for this religion. You see how? Tadris and by teaching. He had classes where he would teach. Wa tasneef and writing. And guess what Allah did for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, fa baraka Allahu ta'ala fi umrihi, Allah blessed, blessed him for his time. Hatta alaf al mu'alafati al kathirati al nafi'ah. Until he wrote books that were beneficial. Rahimahullah. From those books, there are those which are dhakh, big books that he wrote, which are fi mujalladat, volumes after volumes. And there are those which, those which are وَمِنْهَا مَا يَقَعُ فِي مُجَلَّدٍ أَوْ أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Oh, you some, one volume or two. And it becomes hard, صراحة, with all honesty, and حَصْرُ جَمِيعُهَا For us to come and to restrict and to give an amount of the books that he has is very hard. So, uh, scholars that spoke about his books and that which he wrote, uh, like سَخَاوِي in his كتاب الضوء اللامع he says that his book, it, it goes above 150. It's got more than 150 books. It goes above 150 books. And one of the things that Sakhawi transmits in his speaking about him, uh, that is that he used to say, Ibn Hajr used to say about himself, and this wallahi tabarak, this wallahi my brothers, Sakhawi so saying this, that he saw it and he would hear it. He saw, he said, he said some of his works, his books that he wrote and he authored and he wrote on his hand, he said some of them, I stood over them. And at the cover of them, the cover of them, he wrote on it, and wallahi, this is sabiru tawadu, his humility and his humbleness. He wrote on it, وَأَكْثَرُ ذَلِكَ The majority of things that are in this book of mine, مِمَّا لَا يُسَاوِي نُسْخَةً لِغَيْرِهِ It does, is not even equal to a version of the works that the khayr that's out there. And in other times he would say, he would say, Rahimahullah, and his Sahawis, I heard this from him, that he would say, Lastu I am not pleased. And Shay'in min tasanifi, I am not pleased with any works of that I, which I writ. I'm not pleased with it. Are you with me? Why? He says, The reason is because I wrote this in the beginning of my affairs. I did this in the beginning of my affairs. And he said, I never got anyone who would sit and who would clarify, sit with me, and we can get things and change things. Because when you write a book or you write something, what you would need sometimes is to bring a second copy and then a third copy. Tabaatul Ula, Tabaati Thani, Tabaati Thalitha, Tabaati Rabia. Why? As Ibn Qutayba said in his Kitab Adabul Kitaba, is that the person, when he writes, he writes something today and tomorrow he sees that why did he write that? And he wants to take it off. And sometimes he thinks, oh, why did I write it in this order? And why, and why, and why? Does that make sense? Except he said, like it. The only books that he was pleased with is his Sharah of Bukhari. 
wa muqaddimati and the introduction that he wrote. It's not that he was pleased with it uh, necessarily, and that's not what he that's not what it was said. But what was said was that he tried his hard and he put his effort in making sure that he's he done tahrir and his kitab tahdib 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 and his kitab lisan al mizan. Even his kitab Nukhbat al he praised. His kitab al Taghliq that he wrote, he was happy with it because he done tahrir of it. You see, as for the other works of his, which are a lot in number, he said, Wahiyat al Udad. Very weak to take as, as to take with you. Take as a provision is very weak, he said. Da'ifat al Quwa. The strength of it is weak. Imam al-Sakhawi rahimahullah, he kind of mentions that in his other book, that his books are more than, that his books are more than 270. Ibn Fahd in his kitab, Dhayl al-Tadkirat al-Hufad, which we spoke about before, which is the Dhayl of Tadkirat al-Hufad by Imam al-Hafid al-Hajar. When he was speaking about the Mu'allafat of Hafid al-Hajar, he said the following about it. He said, "Alafat ta'alif al-mufida al-muliha, al-jalila, al-sa'ira al-shahida lahu bi kull fadila, al-dalu lahu ala ghazara fawaidhi." He said he authored the books which are beneficial, that are great and noble, that are a proof for his virtue, and that shows how distinct and unique he was in his benefits. And I'm going to finally conclude by saying to you, brothers, before I mention his wafat, he's dying. If Hafid ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, in lam yakun lil Hafid, if Hafid ibn Hajar did not have, from his works that are out there, except the book Fathul Bari, Bisharh Sahih al Bukhari, if he didn't have, except that book, which is Al Jallu Tasanifi, one of the greatest books of his and the most famous of those that would be enough for him wallahi fakhran that would be enough for him to prove his knowledge wallahi that books books brothers it has in it and there are look at benefits lughawi adabi you find in that book of his is full of knowledge. Knowledge that, that was done with it. Tahqiq. No, he said, she said. Ha, knowledge that was solidified. Resources re referenced it back to. You go to it. You get from it what? Ilmul hadith. Application. You want fiqh? There it is. Are you looking for literature and ling Arabic language? Now Here it is. Rather, Lam Yu Allah Fil Islami. Walam Yu Allah Fil Islami. It was not authored in Islam. Sharhun an explanation. Ala Musanifin on a book. Ala Musanifin on a book. In the science of hadith, like it. There isn't. See how many restrictions are we put there? Said there was no book written in Islam explaining a book of hadith. في علم الحديث like him. Rather, Imam al-Shawkani, when he was requested to explain Sahih al-Bukhari, they came up to him, طُلِبَ مِنْهُ أَنْ يَشْرَحَ Sahih al-Bukhari. They said to him, Sahih al-Bukhari. They came up to him and they said, why don't, Shawkani, why don't you write an explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari? Why don't you have your own version? And he looked and he said, لا هجرة بعد الفتح. There is no هجرة after Fatuh al-Bari. That is a hadith of the Prophet, by the way, which the Prophet said there is no hijrah after the conquest of Mecca. So the fatha that the Prophet used was referring to what? 
the conquest of Mecca. But he used it as what? There's no hijrah after Fath al-Bari. No, we're not going to do hijrah from it. There's no reason for us to migrate from Bukha, half of this explanation to another book. We don't need it. Uh, so, Wallahi, brothers, if this, if this book alone was the only book he wrote, then we'll say, لَكَفَاهُ فَخْرًا وَشَرَفًا This is enough for him to boast, and this is enough for him honor. Last but not least, my brothers, Tawfi al-Hafid ibn Hajar, Imam of Hafid ibn Hajar, he died um, on the 18th from the great month of Dhil Hijjah at the year 852. 800 and and the reason why he died was because of an illness. Uh, the month before the Hijjah was what? The Qa'dah, right? The month of the Qa'dah, an illness that fell onto him that he suffered from for a month that was continuous on him for a month, he died from that. And his age was 80 years of age. He reached بَلَغَ ثَمَانِينَ عَامًا He reached 80 years of age. He spent those 80 years of his life, my brothers, and those years of his life on what? He spent his a life, rahimahullah, in judging, in teaching, in authoring, and his janazah, his funeral, the rulers participated. The judges they came. The ulama they came. The general mass came. Bil and he was buried in Qahira. And he was prayed on Wasulli Alihi Salatul Ghaib. And Salatul Ghaib was prayed on him Islamiya. Other Muslim lands they were praying Salatul Ghaib on him. Farahimallahu Ta'ala may Allah Tabarakwa Ta'ala have mercy on him. We will stop there inshallah ta'ala for today's lesson. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.